Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the stator that is used on most of your ATVs, side-by-sides, and motorcycles. There's a couple of different types and there's very specific ways we can look at them and test them. So, let's head over to the table and start talking about how to test them and make sure they're working properly. So let's go. So what is a stator? Well, actually is a fixed set of coils that's mounted inside your engine. And how it develops power is there's a set of magnets that rotate around the axis of it. And by doing that, it produces an AC signal. The examples I have out, each one is what they call a three-phase type stator. Now they make single phase stators, but most of the time you're going to find that on a low power demand machine. But for most of your utility, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, uh, sometimes it can get a little power hungry, so they need the three phase system. So basically what you have are three different windings that are wrapped around these different points and then they end up coming out into a plug. Sometimes it may have the, uh, the pickup in there as well, as this one does, from Honda. Then again, it may be a standalone, like with the Polaris unit, where you only have the windings coming out. The pickup coil is actually separate. Another example, Yamaha. They have the pickup coil, and then you have the windings coming out into this plug. All right, these are just three different examples of the same type principle that we're talking about. Now, how do you test this? Well, there's two different tests that you can do. One is a static test and the other is dynamic test. Now, a dynamic test, you actually take measurements on the machine with the machine running. Sometimes that's not always possible if your machine is not working at all and that's when you have to do just a static test. Most of your static tests involve measuring going from coil to coil or from coil to ground. So, we're going to pick one, we're going to show you how to do it, and I'm going to show you the variances as far as the range that you can run into depending on which manufacturer you're dealing with. Another huge dependent is which type of voltmeter you probably have sitting in your toolbox. I've got three different ones laid out here. One, just one I picked up at a local hardware store. The second one, one from Fluke, which is actually geared toward the automotive industry. And then another one from Fluke, which is more advanced, much more sophisticated. So let's look at the Honda one first. If you were doing a static test on it, what you would do is set it to ohms. You'll notice something here. Right now it says OL, that means it's open circuit. And if you put these two points together, it should try to read as close to zero as possible, which it does. So to measure it, going from phase to phase, you just go from one to two, and it reads 0 0.5, 0 0.5 ohms. Now this one is supposed to be somewhere in between 0.1 and 1 ohms, and it's pretty much right in the middle where it should be. Next, you would go to phase two to three, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.5. So once again, right in the middle. And now you go from one to three. 0 0.6, 0 0.7, so it's right there in the middle. When I'm talking about phase to phase, I'm talking about the windings of each one of these coils. And what you can't see, and what is actually inside of here, is a Y. So you've got that center point where all three of these coils are connected in the middle. And then the end of each one of those coils re is represented by the wire coming out to this connector. So it looks like a Y, and this is what they call the Y configuration. Now, let's take a look at the Polaris unit. Here's where it starts to get tricky. Its range is 0.07 to 0.13, a much tighter tolerance. Now, when you get to take a measurement on it, 0.1. Now, what is it? Is it 0.1? Is it 0.09? Is it 0.11? It can't tell you because it is only accurate to a tenth of an ohm. Let's go to the Yamaha now. It's even more stringent. Its range is from 0.1 to 0.132 ohms. Now how in the world are you going to measure that with just a standard one? Well, you can't. So what would you do if you've got a Yamaha unit and you're trying to diagnose a non-charging system? Well, unless you're willing to go buy this particular meter, I don't really suggest the, uh, the static test is for you, but just for fun, let's show you what this one can do. We've got it flip over to ohms. 
I want you to pay attention to this. Let's see if it can actually hit absolute zero. That's connected together, it should read zero. Look at that, it's reading 0.09 ohms. You know what that actually is? That is the resistance in these wires. But this one has a feature called relative where we can, in essence, zero it out. All right, now it reads zero. So, let's go to the Yamaha. Point 0.13 ohms. It's in there. There's no possible way for you to measure that with either this fluke or just one that you're going to pick up at your local hardware store. You would have to go up to this meter to do it. So in my opinion, for most people out there, the best test you can do if your machine is running is to go to the dynamic test. That'll give you a much clearer picture as to what's going on in your machine. There is one thing that you can check on all three of these that's in common though. What we want to do is measure each phase, one, two, and three, back to the ground or the body of the stator itself. And what we're looking for is just an open or OL. Now we are just measuring resistance, so it doesn't matter about the polarity. All right, going from one to the body, OL, that's what we want. And we're gonna see that on all three of these wires or phases. You're gonna see the same thing with the Polaris as well as the Yamaha. So let's recap. What can you really test with just your average meter on a stator? Well, if you're looking for either an open from each phase going back to the case, or you want to see something close to zero ohms going from phase to phase. If you've got those two readings, well, that at least is getting you in the ballpark. If you do this measurement and there's nothing there going from coil to coil, well, that means there's a break in the line somewhere and your stator is damaged. So the best option, if your machine is running, is to actually do a dynamic test. At that point, you're not measuring resistance anymore. You're actually measuring AC voltage. So you would flip it over to AC, put your leads in the same place, start it up, and you will be looking for a range somewhere in between 20 and 30 volts AC. And it's going to rise and fall as you accelerate the engine and then let it slow down. Now, if you want to learn how to do that in depth, we actually did the procedure on this machine. So if you would, reference that video and I'll walk you all the way through doing a dynamic test on it. Well, listen, if you need any parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. Have any questions or comments? Leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. We just want to say thanks for shopping here with us at Partzilla and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.